Welcome back, Fixed Blade fans. We've got a bit of a Fixed Blade extravaganza today at OG Blade Reviews. That is me, formerly this old sword. I guess I'll have to say that once in a while, now and then, for those that missed the transition. Well, this knife should look familiar to you if you have uh, seen any of my Fixed Blade reviews. But it is not exactly what is in the box, but it is a very close kin. That's the Osuraku Zukuri Mini Kaiken. And Kaiken and Kwaken, by the way, are interchangeable words. I understand Kaiken is the new accepted pronunciation. That's simply all it is. And we'll quickly show you this one which has the Osorako Zukuri style blade, which means a longer point. And it is a type of Tanto. So this one has a three and a half inch blade, and I'm going to bring it out for compare in a little bit. But I don't want to hesitate on showing you what we've got that's new to the channel. A recent purchase from um, i think i got this through arizona knives so i have to thank arizona knives um i wanted to show you a little bit of an unboxing because they do sort of a japanese origami thing here with the uh, uh cardboard paper kind of uh, box you can barely see that but that is a decal with the wave on it the famous wave and i'm sorry i don't know the uh, the uh, ancient and traditional artist that came up with that way, but you see it everywhere, even T-shirts. But that is Williams Blade Design's logo. And here in the box, upside down, is the separated uh, paper box that kind of holds the handle in place and keeps it from rattling around. But it's all sections of folded paper which is very interesting and i put that aside because that has some of the specs we got a magnetic closure and uh all in all it's a very nice presentation but what do we got now well there was the one i showed you that's the mini kaiken and guess what that is the kaiken difference also being that on that original one we had a uh, Sleipner steel, Sleipner or Sleipner steel blade. And on this new one, coming in, uh, Arizona's price was great. I think it was around 240 ish while William's price is closer to 300 But Magna Cut on this guy. And a completely enclosed handle a shorter handle in keeping with the Japanese tradition of the Tanto with the shorter handle. Now, again, you could call it a Tanto. You could more accurately call it Osuraku Zukuri Keiken or Quaken. Magna Cut Steel, not sure the HRC. I know that's everybody's big question these days. How hard is it? How hard can we get it? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, but a longer blade on this, and we'll do a direct compare in a little bit, but we've got a four and a half inch blade on this one. And I'll show you some preliminary specs. We may or may not get to measure it. I think we will because we've really only got the blade length on there. Um, it is made by my Lion Steel, the Kydex by TRC Knives. And TRC Knives is the company that makes the higher end Williams fixed blades. Made in Italy, Lion Steel. The um, model number is OZK003, Osorako Zukuri Kaiken. 120 millimeters, if you like the metric, on the blade length. We'll get into measurements in a little bit, but let's take kind of a survey around once again. Magna Cut by Lion Steel. Uh, I know some will chime in and say, I hear Lion Steel's uh, Magna Cut is soft. Well, what do you mean by soft and how hard does it need to be? 
And are you willing to sacrifice, uh, if it isn't way up there to 64, are you willing to sacrifice potential chipping and uh, other uh, issues with the blade in favor of having it simply as hard as the steel can be? Well, that's a topic for another time. Ribs that emulate the wrapping on a traditional knife, the cord wrapping. And um, again, notice the difference in blade style from what I'm going to show you a little, a little later. We have this demarcation here where there is that secondary Tonto type point, not an American Tonto with a chisel point, but uh, we've got some of those as well. And here is your long section here, which is referred to as the Kisaki, the point of the knife. So this knife is really characterized by that long Kisaki. And uh, I'm not an expert by any means on uh, samurai weaponry or Japanese terminology, although I spent a good deal of time in the Japanese martial arts. We didn't really dissect the uh, components of swords and knives and so forth at that time. It was more empty hand stuff. Uh, Any Huawei, four and a half inch blade of MagnaCut, completely encapsulated uh, micarta handle, black micarta on this one. That is uh, very nice, not too dried out. You don't, you see some lines in there, but you don't see, uh, you know, much dryness that you see on some of the knives when they're in micarta. We have a swedge at the top here, characteristic of the Quaken or the Kaiken. You'll see it on uh, some of uh, Burnley's uh, knives for Pro Cut, for, yeah, Pro Tech, I think. Some of the autos and some of the other knives, I think, by Boker uh, that are Burnley designs. You'll see that swedge at the top. And a lot of people don't like the swedge, but, you know, it is traditional and it does aid in penetration. Let's get into the measurements because we're already seven minutes into this and it's going to be a longer review, I believe. Let's do it that way. Overall length, eight and three quarters inches. With, they're saying four and a half, but I'm getting four and a half cutting edge while I'm getting four and three quarters closer to that, to the handle. Interesting. So they are giving you the edge measurement at four and a half. So it's a fairly medium sized uh, blade. We're going to call it medium rather than large uh, size fixed blade and a handle of 0.57. It's a fixed blade. Doesn't need to be super thin. And the blade stock 0.15. Will it be four millimeters? It'll be 3.8 millimeters. I'd say the blade stock is uh, quite good, actually, for the size of the knife. Here we have a ounces of 4.4 ounces. If we add the sheath, should you need to know, it is 6.3 ounces. Well, let's get rid of this. And... Let's bring out some of those other compares and talk a little bit about the Kasaki and so forth. Here is the Mini Kaiken, Osorako Zakuri Mini Kaiken. You can see the difference in size. You can also see that with this size of three and a half inches or so, they chose to go with a completely straight spine. So the blade, the belly forward here, Kasaki comes up to meet that point, much pointier than what you have seen in so-called traditional Tantos. Now on this one, you can barely see it. There is a curve, a little bit of a curve, a little bit of an upsweep here. And you'll see that on the longer blades by Williams and some that he also designed for Columbia River Knife and Tool. Here is a fairly similar Kaiken style called the Unmei by RMJ Tactical. 
a little different take on a quaken. So you can see here, there still is a little bit of a swedge completely stonewashed on this blade. And this is another Magna Cut blade that I do know is 63 to 64. RMJ gets the hardness way up there. Now I don't, you know, I do have one other Japanese style. Tamashi E, another style of Tanto slash Quaken, designed by Bob Trezuola. And uh, that's his take on the traditional Tanto. Now these style knives, the uh, Osorako Zukuri, the Kaiken, if you look it up and do a little research, I uh, did some light research. We're talking about a blade that was carried more for self-defense by both men and women and the samurai. Whereas the Tanto being up to a foot long was carried as their tertiary weapon with the um, Wakazashi being the uh, middle size sword uh, with a considerably longer blade, more of a sword. And the, uh, the main weapon being the, the katana, being the long sword. So the katana, the wakazashi, and the tanto were the three typically carried by the samurai, but he might have had a quaken or kaiken hidden in the sleeve or in the folds of the kimono, men and women. That's what I have researched and have been told. So uh, Savivi makes that Tamashi. It's a beautiful one. It's also got the encapsulated tang. These are full tangs when they're encapsulated on the knives I'm showing you here. Full tang, exposed tang on this guy, the Unmei, with actually kind of a V grind even along the spine. They did a great job with this. Uh, as far as the Kydex goes on these two, also an excellent job with a big tunnel here for push off. So uh, I removed the strap from this one because I carry it in the pocket very often, but this one has the single loop strap for either a scout carry or you can swing it up and put it over the belt and tuck this down inside the waistband. Uh, it's a very positive push off with the thumb. But what we also have is a tensioner here that is missing on the smaller version of this. We have this screw with the rubber grommet here that you can cinch this down and the way it came, I could almost not get it out of the sheath. Much better now because I loosened that screw, but that tensioner screw is something you see on many of the t knives, the larger knives, especially if you're jumping. Now, I don't know, you'd be jumping out of a, a plane with a parachute, uh, you know, that the Air Force is carrying these. They might, because James Williams does a lot of training of special forces and uh, the military. But that's a tensioner, and I think that's a cool thing. This one did not have it. And you can see we just have the normal split in the Kydex. This actually comes off a little bit easier than the full-size Osorako Zukuri. But beautiful sheets, nicely, nicely, nicely done. And what I notice is there's no friction on the blade. They've made it wide enough, almost kind of an oval, where there's no contact there. Only contact is on the handle. About the handles on these, you notice just enough for the hand and completely neutral. By contrast, here is the Bastinelli Foreigner. That's a great example of a highly contoured handle. And I'm going to get into doing a, a, a video about handles uh, for fixed blades coming up sometime over the next maybe month. But here, Bastion Cove's uh, solution to the small knife is 
to give you a very dedicated grip. Now you can't really change your grip with a knife like this. You can get the thumb here, you can put the thumb here. It's still a small handle, just large enough for the hand. But um, way different style of blade, more of a, a worn cliff, if you will, more of a sax type style blade, but not a neutral handle. So we've got the same thing going with the street beat here from Spyderco, designed by Fred Perrin. We've got a definite notch for the index finger. Great little uh, fixed blade, by the way. One of the standards, I would say, for a hideaway fixed blade. We've got the Handy from Viper, one of my absolute favorite ergonomic handles and beautiful blades. Um, good deal smaller, you see. And once again, a handle that very much is going to form or that your hand is going to have to form too. Okay. I'm getting to my point here. <laughs> Agent 001, a great knife designed by uh, T. Kell, Tim Kell, and Bob DeMarco, the knife junkie. Um, this one also with finger grooves here that really make you hold it one of a couple different ways, either point down because we got a double edge here or point up hammer grip and a little longer with a bird's beak on the end here. What does the neutral handle give us? Well, the neutral handle means that you can hold it in four different grips. More if you consider palming it, because a lot of people are going to say, where's the guard? The guard isn't there. My hand's going to slip forward. There are videos of James Williams punching this style knife through uh, sheet metal and archery targets and whatnot. How does he do it? He palms it. Let's back out. We're too close. I'm looking at the knife from my bird's eye view here. You're looking at it through the camera, and that doesn't always uh, mesh up. So here, in the palm, driving it forward on the thrust. That position will keep your hand from sliding, and James Williams demonstrates it this way too. Cap it with your thumb. You want the edge in for like Pical? Same thing. Cap it with your thumb. There is what's called an emperor node that normally is a, a bead or some other type of uh, structure on the traditional knife that sticks up here. That's an index. These are flat screws. These are flat screws. That one is domed. And when you hold it in the right hand, you know that the edge is forward. If you were to hold it point down, edge in, or edge out, and not feel that, you know that the edge is out. If you feel it, you know the edge is in. So you become acquainted with where that is relative to the edge. And I think that is a very cool thing. Once you get used to it, again, it's tactile. You've got to feel it. These ridges also give you a lot of grip and uh, really do keep the hand from sliding, as well as this waist in the middle here that comes in. I'll show you one more that I designed uh, in cooperation with uh, Morgan Cohen's of Cohen's Craft. Here is a custom by Morgan Cohen's. My idea of a traditional Japanese Quaken or Kaiken or call it a tanto, it's a little bigger. Notice the same type of waist, same type of neutral handle. Beautiful uh, burgundy micarta here that has been uh, hand dremeled, carved by Morgan. And uh, roughly the same style blade with a little bit bigger swedge on the top. And without the double grind that you see here on the, uh, the Williams. Quite a bit bigger knife. 
heading more into Tonto so, sort of uh, territory. V grind on the top, that's not sharp, but that comes to a very pronounced V grind. Got a little more of a flat on the top of the spine of the, uh, the Williams knife. But uh, that's a full custom. That's S35VN. No sheath yet. Morgan does not make sheaths <laughs> for his custom knives. That's up to you. And I've had a couple excellent ones made uh, by Peter Guster of Guster Leather. So again, neutral handle versus um, handle that uh, will contoured handle, I guess we have to call it, where you must grip it a certain way versus gripping it any way you like and still having some good grip. One thing we didn't do is see what kind of an edge that uh, the Williams Blade Company provides us and uh, through lion steel on this Magna Cut. And it first cut was very nice. I'm cutting curly cues, guys. Look at that. You get a beautiful edge. And that's good because your Magna Cut, if it is up there in hardness, is uh, then it'd be a little more challenging to uh, sharpen. I would strop a knife first if it isn't sharp enough before I put it to the diamond or even to the ceramic. There you have it, and uh, let's give you the sheath in the picture as well. That is the Osorako Zukuri 4.5-inch blade from Williams Blade Design in, and by the way, this was a Chris Williams design who is uh, James Williams' son, and uh, that is in Magna Cut. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to give this vid a like and subscribe. Be back with you soon.